Right, I'm going to explain a little bit about how the Tor network actually works. So with Tor, what we have is what's called an onion, onion routing network. And we have intermediate nodes called relay nodes. And these nodes take our data, typically in the form of what's called a cell. So either there's a small cells that are then routed over the network. Each relay node only knows their predecessor and successor, so they can't determine the complete uh, route that the cells will, will take. Within each of these, what we do is that we have an encryption key which is stored, a symmetric encryption key, which is stored on each of the relay nodes. The way that we do that is that we negotiate with the server, in this case the, the, the exit node, uh, a number of keys which each node will have. So each node has one key for, for the route. And we do this through key exchange, which I'll explain in a little minute. But we have a symmetric key, typically this is AES encryption, 128-bit or 256-bit. And then Bob, when he sends the, the data here, then will encrypt first with the end node, then with the node before that, and then for each node. And then the last encryption is with the encryption key of the first node. Okay, so the data is wrapped such as this. He then routes the, the data to this first uh, really node. It then takes its encryption key off, so it decrypts. And then we end up with this data here. Then goes to the next one. So this node here knows the next hop for the cell and then it will then take its encryption key off or decrypt the data using AES uh, decryption. Then we'll move over to here and we can see here there's only one encryption key left. This node will then take that encryption key off and then send it uh, to the destination. With the Tor network what we often have is a gateway node and the gateway node will be the last node in which the data leaves the Tor network. It is this gateway node which will leave a trace of the IP address and any other details from there. So Bob himself is hidden from uh, the destination and all logs to do with IP packets uh, and his browser details and so on will be, will be hidden. Okay, so that's the way it works. And what we use is what's called elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman, as elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman method to be able to negotiate the keys. Okay, so the keys are negotiated from the server and the client, and those are the only two machines which will have the keys because from Bob we need to encrypt that way. And from the server, when it's coming back, we need to encrypt back the way. Okay, so in this case, the server will do the opposite with encryption keys as Bob actually does. So the method that we use is what's called this is called this curve two five five one nine method, and it's an extremely strong uh, method where Alice generates a secret key, just like we have in Diffie-Hellman uh, A and uh, Bob also generates his secret key, B. Uh, there is also a public generator value that we use here. And then Alice creates her public key using the elliptic curve and Divi Hellman method, uh, using this efficient curve. And Bob does that also. They then exchange the public keys and then Bob and Alice do a calculation based on their secret key and they should end up with the same shared key. Okay, so let's actually have a look at how that works in real life. Okay, so I've got a bit of uh, Python code here. Okay, so the Python code is just this simple code here. We're going to generate a public key for both Bob and Alice uh, from, from random numbers. And this is Scalar multiplication. So uh, scalar uh, is the way that we work in elliptic curve. We create a point, 
and on the elliptic curve we create uh, a straight line and the gradient of the straight line is A or the secret and it's actually very difficult to be able to determine what that uh, value of A and B is.